Well, howdy diddly dandy there, Chams. Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, Chams, for you guys out there in the viewerverse, I'm hitting up the Leviathan Expedition. Now, I'm not going to show every single badge, I'm just going to show the more tedious ones and give you my top tips for doing this expedition. Okay, so people, important announcement, people. This is like permadeath with a rogue element thrown in. If you die, you've got to start over and all your progress is pretty much wiped and yet it it's, can be really, really frustrating. However, right at the very start, I would suggest trying to find a way to do yourself in. Right, so I can see a poisonous plant over there. You may have seen I just flew up in the end, just let myself drop and break my legs. I'm going to stand next to this poisonous plant and I'm going to let it do a load of poisonous damage to me. And once it's done a load of damage, I'm going to fly up into the air like Rocket Man and then just fall like a ton of bricks or break my legs and hopefully do myself in and then perish because you want the game over screen to appear. There you go, my shields are down, pretty nice. Yes, taking myself out nice and quickly. And that's gonna pop a badge for actually a dying with inside of the game in iteration. So you've got to do this, and I would suggest doing it before you do any other badges, because it wipes your progress, and you don't want it to wipe anything that you've installed or done technology-wise. Okay, people in the view of us? Right, so once you're dead and you've got a game over screen, loop reset times one, that's gonna pop the badge of die, which is irritating iterate and repeat or something like that. So it's thrown me out to the main title screen, which is very disorientating. I don't know whether this is just for me or whether it was a bug or a feature or what, or whether it's by design. But yes, once I've loaded back in, again, this almost felt like a bug too. I was on, I was on the point of just turning it off at this point because I was expecting the badge to pop up immediately. It didn't, nothing happened. So I'm like, well, what the fudge? That should have popped this badge. That's a little bit strange, isn't it? That's very strange. Yeah, but just wait for a little while and it will actually pop that badge for you people in the viewerverse. It just takes bloody time. Right, now I've got that badge popped decated, there's another badge, the very first badge, which is very simple to do because you've been given this little memory block. Hit that up, boom, you're going to get given this, install locate it, that's going to pop another badge. Now that death loop badge that we just popped earlier, that rinse and repeat one, is going to give you the blueprint for the hermetic seal and that's key to getting off this planet. So you definitely need to top yourself before you go and find your ship and do all that sort of shenanigans or else you're going to waste a load of time and a load of progress make sure you top yourself as soon as you spawn in that is one of the most importantest tips importantest tips <laughs> for this whole expedition there we go and we've also got a base computer and having that base computer is a godsend during this as well because basically say if you need an exomech on a planet and uh, yeah you haven't got the materials to put down an exomech bay every single time that you want one just put down a base computer bay and you can glitch it in i'll get to that later i'll show you it as a proper tip on how to glitch in the exomech bay as well as pretty much all the other exocraft bays when you build your first base but anyway you can do quite a lot of this expedition without even leaving the very first system now one of the actual badges is to get an aggressive fauna which i couldn't find any aggressive fauna in the uh, starting system but i didn't go to every planet so you might want to take a look around and see if you can find your aggressive fauna however i do come across a planet on the expedition path that has an exp uh, that has an aggressive fauna which i'm also going to let you know about during this now whenever you're on a planet make sure you harvest all of the hazardous flora that's in your path on your destinations make sure you're shooting them to get oxygen get your blue crystals pick up any oxygen plants you see as well because oxygen is a rarity in this expedition and also once you fix your ship and you manage to take off shoot the planet for a while shoot a load of hazardous flora before you leave the planet because yeah you can just do flybys and shoot them and get a load of oxygen that way and if you're on a planet with water you can shoot the coastal lines and you're looking for the kelp sacks and blasting them will give you oxygen well it gives you kelp sacks so you can turn into oxygen but i'm going to show you that in more detail a little bit later on as well people so inside of this starting system there is actually an infested planet now the infested planets there is a badge to place down a base computer on an infested planet and uh, pop the badge for it so you can do that in the very first system people before you even leave the system so we get to that in a second too so yep yeah, having your own little personal refiner make sure you take it with you when you leave the planet it's it's um, portable for a reason so make sure you take it with you people yeah don't leave it behind it can be very easily done to be fair 
Okay, so hopefully you're going to be taking off, and you've done that in pretty much every other expedition prior. You're going to be going up to the Nexus quite often and talking to little Polo here and turning in things. But yes, you just need to go up the very first time anyway in the first system. Normally, you'd make a beeline to the station. This time, call in the old Nexus, go talk to Polo because it's going to pop you another badge. You can still go into the station and get your exosuit expansion, have a look for um, little cubes, little blue ones, orange ones, and the hockey pucks to get yourself navigational data because that's going to help you find a crash freighter later on. But we'll touch on that as well in this tips video, people. I know, right? Tips coming out of the freaking wazoo, people in the universe. Yes, these are all my bestest tips that I've got for you. Now, what I would say is this expedition is it's worthwhile taking a look at all the badges and seeing which ones you could do in tandem with one another. Try to multitask the fudge out of doing each of the different tasks because it is very doable. It's like when you're on a planet that might have aggressive sentinels, shoot them in the face. But yeah, you might be able to also find an abandoned building and also get all the sort of eggs as well. So anyway, I've just hit on up the nest planet there on the actual um, planetary map. It's Londinias or something weird like that. But I'm going to head on over to that planet now. I'm going to put down a base computer upon it. Heck yeah, so that's the planet that I took off from. That's not the one I want. The one I want is like, um, I think it's a fungal mold planet, but it's got a write-up that shows that it could be an infested planet. It's not that one either. It's that one over there. It's that yellow freaking marble. Once I actually clear the horizon, I will tell you the planet's name. I think it's Londinies or something like that, or something that sounds like it's got London in it and a Y. But here we go. Here it is here. And there we go. Yeah. Lloydon, Lloydon, or something like London. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like somebody trying to say London, but with a speech impediment. Head to that one. That's the one you want, people. And I'm just making sure I've got my terrain manipulator and also my solar ray actually enabled inside my multi-tool because you want to go to a copper deposit and get yourself as much copper as you can because you're going to be turning that into chromatic metal. We're going to be doing a lot of warping, so make sure you hit on up some deposits. You can see here. I'm flying in I'm shooting the planet to get extra carbon to get extra sort of dehydrogen to get myself some ferrite dust and all the basic commodities do that every time you take off from a planet every time you fly down to a planet and hopefully you're never going to run out of the base elements and also look for hazardous flora shoot the fudge out of those two because that's going to get you some oxygen and if you see a big patch of oxygen plants land a buy it and gather it because oxygen like I say is just not for sale you can't find it for sale on for no no love nor money not a trading post not the stations not from freaking traders nothing so my best tip is gather as much as you can why you're on this planet as well or any planet make sure you go into a cave and get yourself a stack of um, cobalt you don't need a lot of it you just need a small stack of it and say like maybe I don't know, 200 or something cobalt because there are some elements that you're gonna need to build during this quest line to well, that needs cobalt basically so get yourself some cobalt hold on to that and if you do shoot some sentinels, make sure you hold on to some pugnium. Yes, keep hold of some pugnium. You're going to need probably about 100 of that, 200 of that. It's not a great deal, but hold on to some pugnium. And also some ancestral memories. Don't give it all to Polo. Hold on to some of that because you're going to need that for crafting as well later on inside of this expedition. Anyhow, I've managed to land right by an abandoned building. Now, on infested planets, most buildings that you come across are going to be abandoned anyway, and they're going to have eggs by them. There's also eggs out in the wild. Now, you saw there that a sentinel was right by the cave entrance, just by sheer fluke, and I shot the shite out of it, encouraged other sentinels to come in. You've got to take out about five sentinels to pop a badge, so that's what I'm doing right now. And I figured I can use this building for cover so I can lose the sentinel heat, or I could just run back inside of that cave really but anyways i'm going to be running over to that building as soon as i feel that i've taken out five of these little guys and you can see here i've already got the scatter blaster and hopefully you guys will already have the scatter blaster too because popping those sort of memory fragments is going to give you a scatter blaster quite early on or some sort of module that's going to make you a little bit better at defending yourself and attacking these freaking tin canted sky yeah anyway let's run around and let's find ourselves the door now i know this is pre-recorded and i know 
<laughs> I don't find the door all that quickly. Yeah, I run around in a blinking circle before I find the door, people. So yeah, run inside and you can uh, sort of just take cover in there until the sentinel heat goes down. So where I said where you can sort of stack these things together, I know that there's a load of eggs outside as well. So after the sentinel heat is done and I've popped the badge for the sentinels, see if I get any modules that I can upgrade. And then I'm going to try my chances with getting those eggs from the outside of the abandoned building. Heck yes. Right, so people, after you've murdercated your sentinels, make sure you keep some pugnium, like I mentioned earlier. Awesome. Well, now that's done. Now it's time to tangle with death. Because we're going to be trying to get the eggs away from the freaking little green critters out there that look like they're from the movie Aliens. So let's head on out and we'll be doing that one in a second. But let me just pop my rewards, see if I get myself any modules that might help me, just in case they come to attack me. Right, so we've got some memory fragments which I can pop. There's also the Sentinel boundary map. You're going to need that because you can hit that up and go and find a Sentinel pillar, shut down the Sentinel activity and pop another badge. I haven't put that inside this video because I'm fairly sure hopefully you've done that in previous expeditions and shut down a sentinel pillar and you know what you're doing at this stage. I would like to hope. Okay, cool yeah. Anyway, you see those sort of uh, modules that I've installed from the actual salvage technologies there? If you haven't got any Pugnium, you can disassemble the Sentinel technology and they're more than likely to give you Pugnium as well. So there you go, people. Ha Sam! Okay, so now the tough bit. Right, so the eggs themselves, don't go straight at them. Use your terrain manipulator, dig a little well below them. You want to have a nice little hole for them to drop down and maybe make some steps or something. But yeah, just dig it out. There's my sentinel boundary map, which we're going to be using later, Hercules. I'm just seeing if there's anything that I can free up for a little bit of space here. Lovely. So I can actually get those eggs. I'm going to eat those. Yeah, those little sort of salvageable plants. It's giving me back my toxic protection. Awesome. Here we go. Let's dig out underneath there. I think that would do. And hopefully it's going to bounce down there into that nice little well. Now, if I stand here, zappity zap. Now, the reason I'm doing this is the actual little green critters, they spawn on the land. Even when he spawns down there, see him teleport, he teleported back up again. <laughs> yeah, they can't go under the ground. So brilliant. So the balls do though. The balls don't like gravity. The little green guys, they freaking hate it. They stay up the top. So there you go, dundily done. Now I can leg it back inside the building and wait for the swarm to subside and then go back out again and do it again on another batch of eggs if I want. Or I could have been a little bit braver than I was because you only need to get three. You only need to get three. And there was another two around the opposite side of that little hole that I just went and dug out. So I'm going to go back in the same hole. Heck yes, I am. But there you go. You get a message appear on the screen to say the swarm has subsided and then you can go on out. It does take a little while for them to subside. You get the message and then they disappear maybe about 30 seconds later. So just give it a bit and breathe in space. Anyway, let's just hit on up the actual tab here and we'll see exactly how many eggs we need to get. There we go. Done. Oh, yes, just one more. You only need three is the magic number. Heck, yes, it is. So let's just jump on back down into that little hole. And I'm, yeah, see, so there's two more eggs around the opposite side. I might as well get them both. Might as well get them both, people. Lovely jubbly. Let's do that. You can spin them into nanites. And there is a badge to pop for getting a load of nanites. And there's also a badge to pop for getting a load of units. So, yeah. When you actually go to a storm crystal planet to get the storm crystals, you can sell those for a shed ton of units. But there's also you know, some rewards that you get later on, which are going to pop units as well anyway. You get a load of sort of like treasures and things like the golden treasure boxes. Yes. Anyhow, but yeah, to be fair, you don't need that many units. You don't need that many nanites to pop either of the two badges. I did it quite ambiently. The way that I got the nanites one was you get given a lot of modules for the exocrafts, but you don't really need to use the exocrafts at all. So all the modules that I got for exocrafts, I just sold them at the merchants in the station, and that's how I popped my nanites badge. And then pop in the units, just selling things like the storm crystals, or even some of the bits and bobs and contraband that you've got to do another mission later to get the contraband badge. And apparently they both pop at the same time anyway. So yeah, just sell a load of stuff, basically, and you're going to get the units one. It's really damn simple. It's going to happen ambiently, whether, whether you try to or not, to be honest, that one. So here we go. I'm just digging up a shed load of copper before I leave the very first system. I'm going to be using that in the portable refiner, and I'm going to be turning that into a shed load of um, chromatic metal so I can make antimatter. And you're going to need the oxygen to make the antimatter housing, 
and yeah so there we go people that's pretty much my tips for the actual starting system so i've done all of this before i've left the very first system i haven't even gone to the first rendezvous point yet people and that takes up nearly half of this video in, in actuality and so the rest of my tips are going to be some of the most tedious of badges to pop one of those is how to get like a predatory creature as well so that's coming up in a bit so stay tuned so here we go i'm just i shrunk my laser beam nice and small to start off with but at this point i'm getting a bit bored so i'm going to make it nice and big and just blast out the rest now i have also put in the solar ray so i'm going to go over to another deposit and i'm going to be digging that one up but using the other part of the tray manipulator the solar ray to turn it into liquid sun so i can turn that in to polo up in the actual nexus because he lacks a liquid sun Oh, but before I do that, I still haven't put down the base computer, have I? No. So yes, there is a badge to put down a base on an infested planet. And this is the whole reason I went to planet London <laughs> to put down the base. So that's the last thing I've done on this, because maybe I needed that chromatic metal from the copper to put down the base computer, because you need like, what, 30 chromatic metals to put down a base computer? But there we go, we've got the liquid sun. So here we go, here's me putting down my base computer on this infested planet. Heck yeah, so let's hit this one up. Lovely jubbly. Now people, if you're liking what you see with your eye peepers and hear them with your ear holes, smash that subscribe button. It's freaking free, free entertainment. And hopefully you'll be back for my next Next video hit that notification bell as well and then you're definitely not going to miss it but yes if you haven't already hit the like do that and if you know other people that play no man's sky share the video out nice one look at that isn't that awesome now this expedition is one of the only expeditions that you see the leviathans flying over like that and i really wish they would bring those in flying over the nested planets because you yes you do get worms jumping but even on these infested planets in normal game you get just normal frigates, not these living leviathan frigates flying over. At least I haven't seen them. But yes, inside of this expedition you do. So I'm just making a nice simple little base here. Heck yes I am, sticking on a roof that doesn't fit. And yet, yeah, re-deleting it and putting on one that does. Done! There's my nice little base. And I'm going to rename this and call this Infested Planet. Because at the time that I was doing this, I didn't realise but every single rendezvous planet is an infested planet. So you don't have to go to Planet London. I just wanted to do it inside the starting system before we go anywhere and get as many badges popped as possible. This one, it isn't one of the ones that you do in phases. Now this is the tip on how to put down the Exocraft base. So all I'm doing is pressing triangle to go into wire mode. And when it's in wire mode on the thing that I want to put down, you press triangle and R2 simultaneously, boom! And it puts it in, even if you haven't got all the building parts. And if you do delete them, you get all the building parts that you didn't use to put down. <laughs> it's freaking crazy. So there you go. I've just put down all three Exocrafts. And the reason that I've done that is because I've been given a shed load of Exocraft modules. Now there are some of the Exocraft modules that I would like to install. I do want to install the ones for my Minotaur because any extreme planets, you can use your Minotaur to then go around on extreme planets. Just put down another base computer, glitch in the Minotaur bay, you're off. Brilliant. So yes, it's a very good way of traversing extreme storm planets and collecting those storm crystals later on in game, people. So early on, I mentioned when if you go to a station, upgrade your exosuit if you can afford to. And you're looking for these little blue cubes. And there's some little orange cubes as well. And sometimes you get these little flat black discs that are like hockey pucks. Hitting those is either going to give you nanites or it's going to give you navigational data. Navigational data can be traded with the cartographer at the opposite side of the station for maps. If you go for the distressed maps, you can find yourself a crashed freighter if you're lucky. Every single station you go to, go pick these up use your map and it should come up with a crashed freighter or freighter crashed site something like that as an actual bit of text if it just says distress signal it's probably a ship or somebody that's got a broken ship now you can go and get those ships you can go scrap those ships if you're lucky and get a shed load of sort of storage augmentation for your own ship which you're definitely going to need so yeah just do it every single station that you go to and hopefully you're going to come across a crashed freighter as you're going through all your different rendezvous and jump into stations and jump into new systems excellent nice okay so here we go i'm going to jump in my ship and i'm going to be flying out and heck yes done dilly and done and uh, yeah i've actually found myself a crashed freight to sight so that's just over here on this lovely yellow marble or brown one whatever it looks like a giant looks like someone's just sucked a malteser for ages nope it's on this planet over here i tell a lie here we go we're going there heck yes we are Captain Steve, oh 
Captain Steve. Oh, Captain! Captain! was a treat for your ear holes wasn't it people in the viewerverse hope you enjoyed that anyways feeding creatures with bait sticks that you make from carbon and then going over to them to interact with them is how you harvest the ancestral memories and you're going to need quite a welly of that to give to freaking Polo to satisfy him I think it's about 200 or 250 per satisfactions of him and then he's going to give you one of those memory fragments so make sure you feed a load whenever you're on planets that have got a lot of fauna now when I was on about earlier about shooting kelp sacks, I'm staying close to the actual sidelines of the ocean where it's a little bit shallower, or that's the hope, and I'm looking for kelp sacks. Now, there's different types of kelp sack. You're going to know what they look like. These ones are sort of like the umbrella ones. They're sort of hanging down on themselves. The ones that are easier to spot are the ones that are coming up on themselves, and they look like little light bulbs. They look like the kelp sack pitcher, in fact. Shoot a load of those. You can stick them inside of your refiner here, and boom, they're going to be turning into oxygen. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. For each kelp sack that you shoot, you're going to get in between 6 and 12 sort of kelp sacks per pop so yeah it's not a bad way to get yourself a shed load of oxygen but you are going to be there for a while and your shooting accuracy has to be fairly good by this time I had a secondary weapon inside of my actual ship so I had the normal photon cannons I had the rockets and then I also had one of the other whirly twirly gatterly gunny type one so yeah lovely I had that I didn't have the positron eject in my favorite but yes and it wasn't the silotron it's the other one <laughs> Right now, hopefully at this point, you've managed to get yourself a load of nanites. And if you haven't got the nanites, try selling some of the modules that you got for your Exocraft. And with that, come up here and buy yourself the cadmium drive, the emerald drive and the idnium drive. Now, to get to the cadmium systems, you can install that just by using the chromatic metal. Once you go to a red system, you can get the cadmium to install that to then get the emerald, what to get to the emerald systems. And the emerald systems are going to give you the, the drive to get yourself to the idnium drive. So there we go. That's pretty much how you do it so yeah lovely jubbly once you've bought all those free technologies make sure you visit a red star then to go to rendezvous 2 anyway you need to have the emerald drive put in there so you visit the red star get the cadmium to make the emerald drive to put it into there and boom bob's your uncle it's like freaking dominoes so just make sure you've done that you might need some wiring looms you buy wiring looms over at the station and that should be easy and then you can go to rendezvous 2 you won't be able to go to rendezvous 2 if you haven't got your emerald drive installed lovely jubbly it has to be operational <laughs> because <laughs> you can install it and not actually properly install it you know what i mean it's got the elements to get the resources anyways this planet here on the actual way is where i found myself the predatory fauna so there he is right there so hello there predatory fauna boom so this was on the way to rendezvous three i believe i'm not 100 percent sure which rendezvous it was but it was on the expedition path so there we go, Atonement, I've got myself my predatory fauna, I'll show you which planet it was on, so it was on this planet here, Huffield, and that was in Pelaretaza, that one, okay, and it was just before, it was one jump to the next rendezvous point, hopefully you're going to see it on your trail, and hopefully you can hit this up, and it was a walker on that planet Huffield. I've also built a base here, and I've called it um, aggressive fauna base or something called planet and 
hopefully if you go to a station and hit up bases player bases it might come up you're looking for captain steve's base with this name it's just a load of freaking sheets of freaking carbon that i threw together here you go and i'll show you the actual name what would i name aggressive fauna planet there you go people aggressive fauna planet that's the base you're looking for if you want to come here and get yourself one of those walker aggressive fauna pets and pop that badge Storage space is as rare as rocking horse turds inside of this expedition, people. You are given a freighter. So if you are getting low, go on board your freighter. Put a load of stuff on there, which does help. But I'm just giving stuff to Apollo at regular intervals. I've given them all those memory fragments. It does count towards the community missions, which if you log in about no, four or five days before the end of all this, you should be able to pop all of them all at once. But log in every other day if you want. If you've got nothing else to do and you want to actually hit a few up, hit it up because it is a community sort of marker so yeah the more you give into polo the quicker that's going to happen apparently yeah a bit questionable that because i think they've got a lot of control over those sliders with inside of hello games but as i was jumping inside of these systems as i jump i was hitting up the menu screen and checking to see whether it's a pirate system as i'm going towards my next rendezvous point if you've got an upgraded warp drive it might be worth not jumping a system because i came across this one Ibugu Offensa system and that one was an outlaw system and that's how I got my outlaw station so here we go I'm heading on in now if you don't see this and that you've already got to rendezvous for and you haven't actually done all the contrabandy type stuff then you may have missed this one so maybe go and check portal terminuses and see if you can see somebody that's put a base in a pirate system so you're looking for like pirate system base or base pirate system or outlaw system something along those lines to indicate that it's a pirate system and jump to that person's actual base and hopefully you're going to find a station like this otherwise the only other way to really find these is either put in an economy scanner and look for a little tiny skull icon inside of the economy sort of areas and when you're in the galactic map or get a conflict scanner installed then you're going to see a big skull icon in the actual um, map but anyway i've bought everything that's purple at the top of that list that is actually listed as contraband yeah because i did wonder whether some of the stuff that you buy from the scrap vendor after running a derelict freighter and buying it with tainted metal whether that would count because it does say contraband as a tag but no it has to be bought in a pirate system and it has to have that purple tag that says contraband and you can't just jump to another station from pirate system it's not allowed anymore you used to be able to you can't now but now you have to fly on out and then jump to another system manually which is okay because i'm going to the next rendezvous point anyway so on the very first next jump i'm going to fly into a station and i'm going to sell all that lovely contraband and hopefully pop the unit sort of badge and also the contraband badge at the same freaking time but to be fair i've already managed to get the units badge earlier just by selling a load of bits and bobs that i had dug up on another planet heck yes yeah i've also got the storm crystals and i used the exomech thing that i was on about before because the exomech can actually pick up the storm crystals no need to get out your exomech so here I am, up at the Galactic Trade Terminal, I'm going to be selling all that lovely contraband. So here we go, let's scroll on down and let's go and sell all that contraband. And then I think I'll give you a quick recap on the things that you need to be looking out for. So things to look out for is as soon as you start the game, make sure you top yourself, kill yourself, get that badge. Do as much as you can in the first system without sort of venturing too far forwards. And hopefully double up on some of the things that you've been doing. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're going to pop all these badges nice and super quick. There we go, done that badge, heck yes I have. There's also a badge to talk to three of each type of alien race. That's free Corvax, free Gek, and free Viking. Make sure as you've been jumping to all these stations that you talk to a few of the individuals, at least three of each of the different races. And if you are on the expedition path and you see that it's a race you've already been to, you've already spoke to free Gek, don't jump to another Gek system. Just go into the free roam mode, choose Corvax, a neighboring star, but still on the expedition path sort of area, you know, and jump there. You can see there I've already got some yellow chests on the screen. Now I got those as rewards for doing missions. So if you haven't got all the units, you could just sell those and you're going to do that easy peasy lemon squeezy. 
So there we go, peeps. A lot of little ambient tips inside of this one, but a lot of them are common sensey type stuff. And if you've already read all those mission markers, like I suggested at the start of the expedition, and just make a mental note of everything that you've got to do, and just keep that in sort of like the back pockets of the memory, hopefully you're going to be able to do this one nice and easy. What I would say is just really concentrate on not doing something stupid. It's like when you're falling off a cliff or something. Make sure you hit your rocket pack just before you hit the ground it's all about timing and stuff because you don't want to die heck no i'm just putting down my little comms beacon here there was no other comms balls here when i done this people so yeah I, I think it was the very first one here so i'm leaving it right by the portal and i've colored it red and white and it should say captain steve youtube was here yes lovely jubbly so i think this was one of the latter rendezvous points it's either rendezvous four or rendezvous five one or the other but this is really late game so we're getting close to the end of my little mini guide and tutorial people out there in the viewer verse or my top tips heck yes so like i was saying earlier peeps i usually do these sorts of expeditions in the phases that they get presented in but this one i actually planned it so i looked at the badges and thought well i can do that one at the same time as this one that one's going to pop this one that reward it would help me with that objective and i sort of made it make sense to me inside my head so I would say plan this one out, okay? Just go into the menu, pause it or something, do a screenshot or something, save it to somewhere, and then hopefully look at it, or even just take a photo of your blinking phone if you have to or something. But study them and go at it with a little bit of a plan because you don't want to get caught short. Now, whenever there's a storm, you can always use a terrain manipulator and dig underground because then your hazard protection isn't going to go down. And here you go, this is me falling off a cliff and using that timing just right so I didn't break my legs and die. Now this next badge is called a Shattered Past. Now as soon as you hit it up, it's going to tell you to start pulsing into space and when you do so it brings in a derelict freighter. Now you may have already run one earlier because you were given one of those signal beacon detector things. And if you run it when I run it, it was actually in a rendezvous area of space and all you got in there was little jellyfish that flew around. My multi-tool wouldn't work though, I couldn't shoot the dang things. Luckily I had a secondary multi-tool that I could swap to and as soon as I swapped to the other multi-tool I could fire again. So I think that might have been a bug that I just encountered. But anyway, this is the second derelict freighter that I'm running. And again, I'm running it in a Hello Game sort of owned area of space or rendezvous point. So hopefully, if you're running it in the same rendezvous area of space as what I am, in MV Camera 2 or whatever, then you're going to get the same derelict freighter as me. And it's not a pleasant one. It really isn't. It's got freaking all sorts on here. It's got those big blobules that pulsate and they burst and all the little critters come out. Just walk very slowly and if you see that they're really driving just stand still stand still and wait for them to stop driving and you should be okay it's also got those gun turrets on sensors in this freaking one make sure you hit up all the data pads and stuff if you want to get the captain's log and all that sort of shenanigans but basically you just got to get to the final room and the final bulkhead machine and it's going to give you the whale song flute that whale song flute is going to be used to call in your living leviathan and when you call in your living leviathan you go through a little bit of monologue with it and you're going to die again don't do that expedition don't do don't do that badge if you haven't done all other badges make sure you've got every other badge before you do that badge would be my my tips because i it does initiate a death sequence and i don't know what happens if you haven't already completed all the other badges so just make sure it's probably the last one you do <laughs> okay I don't think it does actually reset all of your progress because that would just be a right shite if it did but yeah just be a I'm just saying be cautious. I made sure it was the last one I did. I would suggest that you make sure it's one of the last ones that you do as well. I mean, obviously it can't be the very last badge because you need to do the Whale Song badge to get the very last badge. So I don't think it resets your progress, but mm, I can't hand on heart say for sure because I, I did it the way that I'm doing it and I'm just saying maybe do it the way I'm doing it too. <laughs> okay. So here we go. This is the last one, and this is going to be bringing in the freaking whale. There we go. Boom! And there's my actual logo for the whale to come in. Then there's a lovely bit of dialogue, and like I say, that pops the last badge after you die. Because apparently this whole loop that you've been caught in is because you killed one of these whales, and it's kind of it getting its revenge in a roundabout way that doesn't sound like revenge. It almost sounds a little bit friendly. I don't know. 
yeah sound off in the comments if you if you know exactly what's going on but for me it's a bit butterfly effect anyhow that's the expedition in a nutshell what i would also say is the solar ship is a bit of a pain in the ass mainly because it's got launch thrusters unlike any other ship they recharge themselves but with every other ship you can take off land take off land take off a land and then you might need to recharge it using some launch thruster fuel this ship as soon as you've taken off if you don't put launch thruster fuel back in it again you can't summon your ship over you have to wait for it to manually recharge it, and that takes a freaking lifetime and a lot of these planets when you land in, in a position it's always a roundabout position and you have to walk miles away from your ship well if you can't call your ship in you've got to walk all the way back again and because these planets are quite hostile and the environment's quite hostile and there's massive sloping mountains that the ship drops the chances of you killing yourself just on the walk backwards to your ship back and forth from your ship is very high so i would use that tip that i gave you earlier put down the base computer make your um, little exo mech exo bay craft thing by using the wire method so by pressing triangle and pressing r2 and triangle at the same time to place it when you haven't even got the materials and then that way you can traverse the planets inside of your exo mech rather than what i'm doing here and sliding down and breaking my limbs and all sorts of other stuff while there's an extreme storm rolling in the storms have no effect on your exo mech either so use your exo mech as much as you possibly can and that's going to negate the chances of you dying massively inside of this expedition so that's a nice big tip for you people in the view of us but anyway after you're done and after you've hit on up all the missions you should have some fireworks so i'm going to put down the fireworks and set them off make sure you hit that big badge as well at the end there because that's how you're going to get your living leviathan frigate for your frigate fleet people in the view of us heck yes and they're all my tips for this expedition i'm going to set off some fireworks these lovely yellowy greeny fireworks against the yellowy greeny sky and you're not going to be able to see them but trust me there's a celebration happening right now people heck yes there is and that fanfare is for you guys in the view of us for watching this hitting that like and subscribe and sharing it and hitting that notification bell and all that sort of stuff hopefully that's been done but if, if it hasn't been done stop watching the fireworks they're not free <laughs> they are <laughs> i'm just joshing until next time people in the view of us goodbye goodbye and goodbye again well thank you very much for watching if you like what you see please hit a like and a subscribe and i'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on patreon and over on youtube membership thanking you backers and if you want to support this channel just don't skip the adverts that throws revenue down my avenue or yeah just stay with captain steve that little bit longer and hit something on this screen there's merch here now too